Lord Jesus. Amen. How good it is to praise the name of the Lord, right? How good it is to offer Him our gratitude, our expression of redeemed souls. That's what the praise of the Lord uh, for the church is. Because we are hoping for blessing from the Lord. I greet everyone who are present here and also the ones who are following us online with the peace of the Lord. In reverence to the reading of the word, I'd like to invite the church to stand up and we can open our Bibles in John. Gospel of John, chapter 2. I'm going to read from, from verse 1. Gospel of John, chapter 2, from verse 1. <coughs> Thus says the word of God. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now, both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, what do your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Whatever he says to you, do it. Now there were set there six water posts of stone, according to the manner of the purification of the Jews, containing twenty or thirty gallons uh, apiece. Jesus said to them, Fill the water posts with water, and they filled the them up to the brim, and then, and he said to them, "Draw some out now, and take it to the master of the feast." And they took him. When the master of the feast has tasted the water that was uh, made wine, and did not know where it came from, the master of the feast called the bridegroom, and he said to him. Every man at the beginning sets out the good wine and then offer the uh, uh, low quality wine. So now, uh, verse 11, and Jesus manifested his glory in Cana of Galilee. Amen. The church may be seated. My brethren, when we look at the Word of God, we see something that is very important. Because we see in the Word the entire project of the Father. We see in the Word everything that man needs to reconcile with God. We see in the Word all the teachings so that we may have a life in fellowship with God. We see in the Word examples stories of servants and people and nations <coughs> and all of this as for us a uh, lesson so when we take out as an example of life especially for our spiritual life when we apply the word of God in our spiritual life you can be sure of one thing. God will be pleased with you. There is no man, and there will never be, man that has obeyed the word of God and was frustrated. There is no infirmity that could have Opposed to the voice of Jesus. There is no oppression. There is no defeat for the servant of God. Here we see Jesus beginning his ministry 
And the first miracle of Jesus was done here in a wedding. This here was the first miracle that Jesus performed. A miracle that was registered. And today we would like to speak a little bit about this miracle, which was performed during a wedding. Jesus transformed water into wine. Then you might ask, wait, would it not have been for him to have resurrected Lazarus first? Would not have been better if he, if, if his first miracle could have been the healing of the paralytic or uh, a blind man? He could be more impactful. Maybe people would have looked to Jesus in his beginning of his ministry in a different way and believed more in Jesus but we are going to see that the Word of God all of it is prophetic and we're going to see the reason why Jesus performed his first miracle during a wedding here we see John who wrote the fourth gospel fourth uh, book. In fact, there is a, a certain observation that sometimes people say that it was not John who wrote it. And the author would not have been John. However, the authorship was given to John. It was attributed to John. But when we see Matthew who wrote the first gospel, you see that Matthew introduces Jesus as a king. Was, was a king. You're very good. King. K -k king. I remember the story of the father. The child was a little slow. And the father. The, the son was everything for the father. Every, everybody was smoking the child because it was a little slow. And the father said, no, this child has no problem. Do you want to see it? Come here. What is the name of that fruit? Round. Round that you open up. Has a big seed inside. It's green. That you eat. And see how it's going to answer. What is it? You put sugar inside. Uh, 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 what, uh, pineapple. It's uh, play with uh, words in Portuguese. It's hard to translate. So Matthew uh, introduced Jesus as a king because when he writes down the genealogy of Jesus, he speaks and says that Jesus is descendant of David. Oh, da David. Now, oh, you're getting better. That's good. So then Matthew, he writes to whom? To who? To the Jews. So the entire book of Matthew was geared towards the Jewish people. So everything that Matthew saw in the way he writes, we see that he introduces Jesus as the king presenting to the Jewish people that Jesus came to reign that Jesus was the Messiah that the, this is um, um, family line was David because actually uh, your your family line came from the mother right because Mary the mother of Jesus she was a descendant of David that proved that Jesus was from a descendant of David so Matthew introduced Jesus as a king and now Mark introduces Jesus as a servant and Mark his book it was written to the Romans the Roman, Empi the Roman Empire that superpower dominated the entire region 
they, they were the greatest empire then. They had, they had many slaves. So the Romans understood it very clearly what it was to be a servant. So Mark introduces Jesus as a servant, like the one who came to serve. And even Mark says that Jesus, he came here and went there and he healed and he had no time to do anything else, only work, work, work. And Mark finishes his gospel with Jesus saying, go to the entire world and proclaim the gospel. So, to work. So then, the church needs to work. The church should not be standing still. So now, Luke introduces Jesus, who was a doctor. Luke introduces Jesus, and he geared his book towards the Greek. So he introduces Jesus uh, as a perfect man, because the Greek, they liked this kind of stuff. They liked new things. They liked beauty. They were conquered by this. They were seduced by this kind of stuff. So Luke was a doctor. He had a different way of writing. He came to uh, wrote details. So the book of Luke, he wrote details because the Greeks liked it. So that when they were introduced to Jesus, they heard about Jesus. The Greek knew that Jesus was going to be crucified and killed. Jesus with such talent, this way of preaching, the multitude that followed Jesus. The Greek offered Jesus asylum, political asylum. Oh, we're going to bring this man to Greece. It is a waste of a life. The Romans are allowing Jesus to die because the Greek liked it. So now John, what John writes was different because John, his book was geared towards to the church, church for the servants for the Church of God, for the new Christians, the ones who are the book of John was reading, written after the year 60 after Jesus. The martyrs in the arenas already happened. The new Christians were already going through difficult moments then. And John now introduces to the church and says that we can do all things in Jesus. The intimacy that John had with Jesus, the way that John, a young man, he was, he was there. He was, he stood out how close he was with Jesus. He was one of the disciples. And we see that the Word of God, it can, the church can do all things in Jesus. And now, here Jesus, on the third day of the wedding that was taking place, Jesus was there with his mother and his disciples in the beginning of his ministry. Jesus performs a miracle. As I said, he transforms water into wine. So now we are going to apply this message, which is a message very much used in weddings. But we are going to uh, take away this, the message and apply it to our lives. So when we speak about a wedding, you speak about co-commitment, right? Wedding is a commitment. Wedding is a uh, commitment. So when we are in Jesus because the wedding of man with a woman the Bible tells us that is it is symbolically the wedding between Jesus and the church so now Jesus his first miracle Jesus is now showing to us that that the life of the Christian the life of the servant of God 
the the life of a man of God when he lets go of everything and now he makes a commitment to be linked to Jesus to leave the penny on Jesus to live in fellowship with God he will receive what? the blessings from God because Jesus will be present one man makes a decision to convert when man decides to accept Jesus as the savior of his life he's saying no to the things of the world he's taking on a commitment to God to walk in Jesus and at the same time Jesus he makes a commitment with the church to lead the church and to fight for the church and give himself for the church and that's what Jesus do, did he died for the church and Paul when he went to persecute the people of God who met with Paul on the, on the way to Damascus Jesus a strong light came to him and says Paul Paul why do you persecute me Paul was not persecuting light he was not persecuting light. Jesus he was persecuting the church but Jesus placed himself in between Paul and the church and every time that you have your difficulty, your trials, every time you're living difficult moments, know of one thing, Jesus is with you. And he will fight for you. He will intercede for you with the Father. Father, you raise on the right hand side of the Father and you intercede for us. Jesus is our defense attorney. He is our mediator. Jesus is everything for us. So now we begin to understand why Jesus performed his first miracle during a wedding. Why is that? Because Jesus is showing here that when man makes a commitment to serve God, he will have a blessing from God. You have the operation of God. You have the manifestation of God on his behalf. You become a target of the mercy, of the grace, and of the love of God. But a few things happened here in this wedding. And the first thing was, was that on the third day, they ran out of wine. People, at that time, and even today, even more today, every feast, the most important thing is the wine. They could run out of food, water, anything else, but they could never run out of wine. The concern of the parents, the concern of the ones who were organizing the, f the feast, they were saying, oh, people, for the love of God, they cannot run out of wine. You can misguess the bride, <laughs> but not the wine. But here on the third day, where the feast was happening, they ran out of wine. And the Bible speaks about the third day, right? We speak a lot about this, about the third day. Why is that? Because on the third day, it is connected to what? To the death and resurrection of Jesus. And when we speak about the third day, we are speaking exactly about this. And the Bible also speaks about three operations of God. And the life and the story of man. Those were three periods. And we can highlight those periods right here. Like if it was the first, second, and third day period of the day. So the first period in the history of man was between Adam to Abraham, which was 2,000 years. The second period was between Abraham to Jesus, 2,000 years more. And the third period is the one which we're living, was from Jesus to now, 2,000 years. So the Bible speaks about these three periods. It speaks about those moments exactly here on the third day when the wine ran out. It was a period when Jesus came to the world and he introduced to us the perfect ministry. He presented himself as a king. He presented himself as a perfect man. He came as a, and presented himself as a perfect servant. And he presented himself as our savior, the one who died, but on the third day he resurrected, defeating death. 
the eternal death of man. So on the third day, it is exactly the period in which we are living. It is a period of the operation of the Holy Spirit in the life of the church. We can never run out during this period more than ever the operation of the Holy Spirit. Because it was in this period on the third day after the death and resurrection of Jesus when he went up to heaven, that's when the Holy Spirit was sent to guide the church that we are part of for this 2,000 years, preparing the people of God to live in eternity with God. So that when we speak about the wedding, so the commitment between man and God, which is the wedding between Jesus and the church, the church that we are part of, we should never run out of wine. The wine here speaks about the love of God. The love speak, uh, The wine speaks about the joy. The wine speaks about the presence of the Holy Spirit in the life of the church. The church that doesn't have the love of God or the joy of salvation. The church that doesn't have the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. The church that doesn't have the spiritual gifts. The church that does not live under the control of the Holy Spirit. It is a failed marriage. The servant of God that is part of the church, faithful church but doesn't have the blessing of the Holy Spirit in his life, he becomes a failed person. His commitment with God is failed. He has no joy. The feast is over. Everything is over. The guests go away. The groom gets upset. The bride. Everything is, com is compromised. But in moments like this that we see here, that in the with the presence of Jesus in our lives, everything becomes new. Jesus did not perform a physical healing. Jesus operated a transformation. He transformed water into wine. So let's see here what this moment was, this miracle of Jesus, this transformation. The word says that when the wine went out, but there were a couple of uh, vessels of clay, six, six vessels. They were empty. Six vessels that were going to be used for the purification. Because when the Jews went, would go to purify, they would fill the, the vessel with water and then they washed themselves. So the vessels were empty. Then Jesus said, fill the vessels. So we see this moment where the vessels were empty. So, in other words, there are moments in the life of man that he feels that he is empty. He feels that he is alone, away from God. There are moments in the life of man that he feels that he is incomplete, empty of the blessing of God, empty of the glory of God, empty of the operation of God. They feel like they're completely defeated, useless. And that's what it is. One man is in the world without Jesus, without the salvation. Jesus, he's, he's nothing. He's incomplete. He's frustrated. Disappointment, defeat, not knowing what's going to happen tomorrow, not knowing what's going to happen to me tomorrow. Oh, how about my family? Man feels like this. But from the moment that he is filled with water, and water here, is important. No one lives without water. You may stay a long time without eating, but without water, nobody can survive. Now I ask you, who is thirsty? Who wants to drink water? We drink water because we need. Isn't it true? There are people that don't drink water all day. But you drink water because you need if it was not the absence of water, if I was not going to die, if I was not going to get sick because I'm not drinking water, I don't think anybody would drink water because water is something that is tasteless, right? Everybody prefer a uh, Coca-Cola or uh, another soda. It has no taste or smell. Nobody has. Nobody wants to drink water. They do this because they need. 
But there are many Christians that are serving the Lord because they need. Because if they do not go to the church, the Father is going to be upset with him. If he does not go to the church or, or a meeting, he's going to be disciplined by the pastor. There are many people that are serving God simply because they feel the need with no pleasure, without joy, without taste. There are people like this. People that are sitting on a bench today. They are only here because if I don't go, I'll lose my spot. If I don't go, I'm going to be uh, youth and adolescent. They're going to be criticized. My father is going to uh, punish me. We should not serve the Lord out of necessity. We should serve the Lord out of joy. We need to have joy, pleasure in coming to the service. We need to have, take, have pleasure at home to open the Bible and read in the Word of God. We need to have pleasure of coming to an early dawn and participating on a meeting, even through Zoom. But there are many people here that are serving, the, serving God. And they do this. And they are part of the church denomination. Their names are written in the list of members of the church. You pick up the beautiful book and such and such person, his family is, read, is part of the members of the church. And it's, you, know, you, you even do a couple of things. And donate a little money, do this and that. But if there's no some, there isn't someone that's saying, oh, drink water, uh, it's coming time for the service, get dressed, take a shower, we're going to be late. If there's no one bringing them there and forcing them, they're not going to drink water. They don't come. They don't pray, they don't wear word. They don't seek the Lord. There are many people like this. They are living in the presence of God because they don't have any other option. Because if they had an option, they would have been someplace else, but not in a ser church service. If they had another option, they, they could play a song from the world, a secular song, they would hear instead of listening to a song of praise. There are people like this, my brother. Sadly, people in this situation, they, they are vessels filled they're like, their hearts is like vessels filled with water, but they have no pleasure. They don't say glory to God in the church. They don't thank the Lord for what God has done. Those are people that does not recognize the love of God. People that do not glorify bitter people. There are people like this. But Jesus is here to transform and tonight, the Lord, He wants, and He will transform this, your stand into wine, into good things. There are people that tonight that are going to be leaving this place filled with the grace of God, filled with the love of the Holy Spirit, with your assurance in their hearts that if Jesus comes today, will be all going to the eternity with the, to live with him. People are going to be leaving this service completely renewed because we believe in the operation of Jesus. We know that Jesus is present. We know that Jesus here present in this wedding between you and God, this commitment that you took on so many years ago when in the beginning there was wine. In the first three days there was wine. They had the first love. You glorified the Lord. You fought and you fought, fought father and mother, work your boss, no I'm going going to the seminar I'm going, if I have to miss a day of work I will miss it but I will not miss this meeting how many of you have not done this how many of you have faced husband, wife and father and mother for the love of Christ people yeah in, in, for the first three days they have love they have joy to run to the church. The first thing they wanted to do was to take a shower. Sometimes even you, you didn't have time, but you dress up and go to the service. I can't miss the service today. 
because the Lord has a blessing for me. But there came a moment on the third day when Jesus died. And Jesus has died. And Jesus is dead for many people. Because they ran out of wine. They lost. They ran out of joy. They ran out of the desire to run to be kneeling down in the presence of God. But tonight the Lord is here. Maybe you're here in this first moment. In the first moment and where you ran out of wine. You're living a moment where you go to church out of an obligation. But tonight the Lord wants to transform water into wine. And that's the next step. When Jesus instructed everything that the water, a miracle takes place, the water was transformed and um, the master of the feast, he tasted it, he said, how is that possible? Every wedding that I went to to this day, the master of the wedding, it was the one was the the person that you you hire to organize a, a feast you pay so much right every feast that went to this day and i was seeing something like this every to this day every feast that i participated everybody puts out the, the good wine first and then afterwards they put the the bad wine because people are already a little drunk if you put put out uh, a bad wine nobody's going to notice but this wedding was different because here you you left the best wine for the last day. My brethren, that's what the Lord has for you who entered here tonight in this house. The Lord has the best wine for you. The Lord has what is best for you. The best in your life. The best in the life of your son. What is best for your wedding. The best for your physical life. Yes, the Lord has the best for everything that he has already given to you today to this day you just need to have Jesus as a guest in your spiritual life you just need to allow Jesus to operate you just need to allow the Holy Spirit to take control of your heart and you see that it's going to be worth to be in the presence of God so Jesus began his signs in the can of Galilee and manifested in his glory and his disciples believed in him. My brother, the church of God that we are part of, not Maranatha Church, not Assembly of God or Baptist, no, the faithful church, the first church that has his commitment to God, you need to leave this place with this joy, the assurance that Whatever you do for God is with joy. You do out of dedication. You do this out of love. Because through love, because of love, Jesus died for you. And the Holy Spirit is being poured out. In this last hour here, the beginning of everything. Right at the beginning of his walk. Right at the beginning. Is where you had the mark. Where you were introduced to salvation with Jesus where you you received a stamp from the Holy Spirit and if we came here to the, to this night is because we have believed in God the operation of God the transformation of life so the old man no longer exists the, my own ego doesn't exist the way I was I was I was is left in the past today a new creation because God and Jesus has transformed has transformed our hearts amen we're going to sing a song and you at this moment you're going to allow the Holy Spirit through the will of God to operate in your heart to transform your life so that you serve the Lord with joy
Vai cagar. Bless be the name of the Lord. Lord to Jesus. Bless be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The brethren, the love of God is a love that cannot be measured. Then there's a way for you to measure how God loves you. Nobody can understand why God loves us in such a way. Then you might be thinking, oh, but I'm such a sinner. I do so many bad things. I'm a difficult person. Nobody likes me. But it doesn't matter. God loves you. And the proof of this was that He sent His only Son to die in your place. Is it possible to understand this and explain this? Would you do this? In the book of Song, Solomon says, If she be a wall, we will build on her a place of silver. And if she be a door, will enclose her with boards of cedar. You know what that means? People feel like this sometimes. You have you seen a wall? A wall. A wall. Out there. Out of concrete. What do you see in this wall? Many times, nothing sometimes. But if the word says that if she's a wall, you're going to build a palace out of her. So Sometimes you feel like you are nobody. You feel like you're, you're unable of being the presence of God. Sometimes you feel like you're so devalued by the, the husband, by the wife, by the son, by the mother and the father, by the neighbor. You feel like you feel nothing. But when God looks to you as useless as you are, like you feel like you are, or that the people tell that you are, God is going to build a, pa a palace out of your life. God is going to make inhabitants. God is going to allow you to bring to eternity. And because that's why Jesus died, was so that you could be given worth. Not by man, not by your neighbor or family, no, but in the presence of God. But if she, if she is a door, Oh, I'm going to make a, a door out of cedar. Cedar is one of the most expensive woods that existed at that time. It shows a little door. No, I'm going to make like a little door. No, I'm going to make a door. Oh, a beautiful, a special door. It's not going to be just a common door. It's just a beautiful door that everybody's going to go through. And that's what Jesus do, does. That's what God does. And God looks to you when you are in your difficulty. And feeling so small and you are, feel like you are incapable of being victorious, Jesus rises up in the right hand side of the Father and says, Father, I died for him. Father, I died for, for her. Father, my blood was shed on that cross. I suffered 33 years for him, for her. They deserve victory. They deserve an answer to a prayer. They deserve, yes, to be seen with, with a good gaze. And the blessing and grace of God is enough for us. That's what God does to us. When you feel like you're nobody, God raises you up. When you feel like you're small. God is saying, saying you are a palace. 
I sent my son to die in your place. So in all the words, we're a lot of things, right? Sometimes the enemy tries to push us down, to diminish us. But God wants to raise you up. And we can do this. Just tonight, you need to open up, up our heart and allow God to transform your life. A life that doesn't have anything. Water. I transform water into wine. What? The thing that brings jo produces joy. Literally speaking, that's what wine does. You take away your reason. Involves you in such a way. But spiritually speaking, it is the same. God also brings joy to us. But it's not a joy of this world. It's not, not a fleeting joy, a uh, joy that goes away, but the joy of God in the life of man will lead us to eternity. It takes us out of this place and places us in God's arms. That's what God wants to do to us tonight. You'll see how good it is to serve the Lord. You'll be able to see how gratifying it is to be in the presence of God. Not only the service and the presence of the bread, no. Whatever you are, uh, on the road, at home, in your neighborhood, whatever you are, you will serve the Lord in the same way. It's not going to be like, oh, uh, uh, no, no. Sometimes you say, hey, that man is a big deal. And they say, no, he's not, no, he's just a wall, he's a little door. No. That's not how God looks to us. You are important. I am important. We are important to God. You are part of the faithful church. Amen. I'd like to invite the church to stand up. I'm going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. have chosen us, Lord God, to bring us one day into your holy presence. We praise the Lord. Because you have experienced of the good wine. You have served your church. Because nothing in this life can be compared, Lord, to the blessings that you have given to our lives. the blessing of our salvation. We praise you, Lord. Because one day, you set us apart, Lord. Took us out of the world out there so that we could see a living God. A God that reveals himself to us. That speaks to our heart with great depth. And that knows us inside, Lord. So that before we even begin to think we already know what we need. You're a wonderful God. A God that for you nothing is impossible. Nothing is hidden to your eyes. What the one that truly knows us God. Who is a great, your true friend faithful, present in the difficult moments, in the moments of joy. In every moment we can see the care of the Lord towards ours. As your servant said, we are so small, Lord. But you love us in, in a, such a wonderful way. Our tears are tears of joy, Lord, because we could have been in so many other places. But it was pleasing to you, God, to show to us that it's best to be in your presence need to be at your feet, God, offering you uh, our tears and our smiles because you have done great things to us, Lord. We are not deserving, Lord, but you are the one who loves us and, and touches our hearts every day. That's why we love you, Lord. Love to serve you. Love you to be a part of your redemptive work, glorious work. This work that the Holy Spirit, where the Holy Spirit reveals Himself every day to our lives. That's why we praise the Lord. And for each heart that your Holy Spirit has touched, Lord, 
Yes, none of us are here by chance. We are here because your Holy Spirit guided us to your house, has protected us throughout the day, did not allow anything to prevent us from come to coming to your house tonight. That's why we praise you, Lord, for everything in the name of Jesus. And the Lord has given us spiritual gifts, and the spiritual gifts the Lord has given for the service tonight. The Lord has shown that there was a sister. She has the gospel. Like the word, like a cane, right? Oh, it is here. An amulet, actually. Something that you use as a, a lucky charm. Something that is going to give me luck and preserve me from death. But we should not serve the Lord in this way. You, you, you need to put a cast on what God wants to do and limiting the operation of the Holy Spirit. We need to praise the Lord with joy. So tonight, the Lord is transforming your heart, right? The Lord also has so send, said that uh, there's a man that dreamt about his own death. I have not preached for a long time here, so just... Uh, <laughs> it's been a long time since I preached here. I know the message is taking long, but just be patient. Tonight, uh, this man s dreamt about his, his own death and uh, it shook him up. The Lord allowed him to have this dream to show him that he does not have the assurance of salvation. But the word of grace is still open. There is still time. If you want, he can today leave this place with this assurance. That's what God has done tonight. He has operated salvation here. We believe in this by faith. We know that the Lord is present. And the Lord also has shown that he, we have been a target of the great love of God. Always the Lord is always operating on our behalf, preserving our lives, preserving our families. And this has been a great worth for our lives. Let us pray, bring, bring this after a close. Lord God, receive, Lord, our adoration, our service to you. Give us, Lord, a week of victories so that we once again contemplate your glory, Lord. Continue operating in every heart. Continue operating, Lord, in each home here represented and that we may have the assurance that our names are written in the book of life. Receive our adoration, our praise. Is the prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. Amen. In your name we say the great, wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender, the sweet, the life of the Holy Spirit may be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. We're going to begin now the period of assistance if you desire a prayer we're here at your disposal pastor deacons and ushers sisters you can simply raise your hand and or ask somebody from the church to raise their hand for you tonight after the assistant we're going to pray for everyone right the crowd is going to go back to school right studying is important right you need to study and pray for the children, youth, adolescents, everybody that's involved, teachers, everybody's involved in this part of school. Soon after the assistance, we're also in the, in the month of the neighbors. We're praying for the neighbors this month so that the Lord may save them and that they may receive a blessing from the Lord. We're going to begin this coming Saturday at 6 p.m. I'm not going to, uh, we're going to start a little orchestra, uh, children's band. So if you're interested in having your child learning an instrument, seek Dani, and she's going to help you with this. Uh, Brother Antonio also has a class for a very long time. Uh, Antonio teaches uh, instruments of of like a saxophone, a flute, 
it's not a little band, it's an or a symphonic orchestra. Can I see it? Uh, sounds good, right? An orchestra for the children. So you if you're interested to have your children be an instrumentalist, have a conversation with Danny, what can be done or an instrument you need to buy so that we can begin. This coming Saturday at six of the afternoon. And as the sister are going to be here in the service, we're going to begin this activity. Amen. Anything else? In the future? In the near future? This coming Tuesday, we're going to begin our service in presence here. Not this coming, the next Tuesday. Here on Tuesday, right? We're going to have a service with a dinette with a uh, uh, debate about the Sunday school. So let's be praying for this so that we maybe quickly go back here for, with the service on these Tuesdays. Push the entire church, the peace of the Lord.